Welcome to week five of my virtual objects devlog. Got some exciting announcements this week, but first we're gonna start with a sound check. So if you might have your speakers or your headphones turned up really high, about to fire something really loud, here we go. So if that's good for you, your audio levels should be fine for the rest of this. Got some exciting announcements this week. We are now on Steam as hot dogs, horseshoes, and hand grenades. You might be asking yourself, what's with that title? Well, I would explain it as such. If there's anything as quintessentially American as playing around with assault weapons, it's grilling out during the summer and playing lawn games. But in all seriousness, it's because of the fact that what I'm most interested in is creating really compelling, detailed, and precise object interactions. And so what I'm going to be doing over the coming months, and it's going to make its way into the game as a series of environments and experiments um, and other fun toys, is really finding out what works for one- and two-handed precise interactions, both for simple objects, actions like throwing, and complex ones. Um, with many moving mechanical parts, like this AR. So let's get down to the fun stuff. Let's get right down to the new toys. First off, we've got this M79 grenade launcher. Works just like the break-action shotgun. Boom! Super fun to play with. It's missing a few of its sounds. Someone pointed out on a Reddit thread that when Arnold uses this in T2, it makes this great sort of thump noise as the shell pops out. That'll be coming soon. Along with it, actually, but I'll, I'll show this first, we've got a sort of quick belt system. So, as you notice, throughout the development of this, I've been using these tables as a way of just having objects near me, um, but I'd like to be able to move around with more stuff. And so what we can do is grab objects and place them into a series of quick slots that have a size associated with them. So in this case, I can carry six of these grenades, and I can even put the launcher itself directly into my belt. There's also a next to the head slot on each side, so I could even carry additional large objects. Another cool feature of the M79, which isn't super useful in this environment because that wall is only like 50, 55 meters away, is that I've gotten the actual sighting system on this working. So if we pop it up here, I can basically grab this element and line it up. You can see markers there for 100, 200, 300 yards, and we can adjust it to where we want, in this case, really low. And then line up the top of that top sight with the foresight. As I said, you'll be able to actually confirm that it works once I have a larger environment for us to play in. Um, and this is only possible, actually, because all of the ballistic weapons that I've made got a major upgrade this week, in that instead of just being sort of straight fire ray casts, there's bullet drop due to gravity, and there's a pretty coarse air drag simulation, which was actually necessary to get the grenades to fall at the proper rate at these distances. So that's working. Let's toss these over here. Next up, for some more structured playing around, with our virtual firearms here, I've created this goofy cobbled together system where basically what we can do is pick a distance for our targets. We can pick, say, the number of targets, the number of waves, I'll just do one, and the amount of seconds we have to shoot them. I'll go 12. I don't know if I reloaded this, but I'll just do that there. Awesome. And then we've got our score down there based on how well we did. The, uh, the way the target scoring works basically is if you hit the 
outer ring, it's one point. If you hit the next ring in, it's three. And if you hit the bull, it's 10. So it's actually really hard to get your full, full score for a set. Once you've, once you've shot around, you have to hit the reset button down there. And then you can say hit X here and put in a completely different sequence. So I could pull this all the way in, go five, one, three. Oh, choir going real fast. I'll put it on full. There we go. So yeah, and this will be a system that I'll be expanding more over time, adding other sorts of targets, both moving ones, um, pop out ones behind these sort of hills here, and really whatever else seems interesting and fun to do. All right, what's next? Oh, so I've got a new menu system on the controllers. We can point at things and retrieve them directly to our hands. This is specific, this is really designed in mind for a lazy people like me and folks who have a really small room space to work with. You know, this environment here, these blue railings trace about a two and a half by two and a half meter space, maybe a little more. Um, and I know some of you are gonna be stuck, at least for now, at one and a half by two. And so this is really designed for people who need further away objects into their hand or are cheating their room scale space because they actually have like a couch here and a couch here. Awesome. Next up on that is we have a teleportation ray. So let's pop over here. Whoop. There we go. So over in this section of the environment, we have some horseshoes. And you might be asking, really? I, I, I mean, horseshoes are nice and all, but, but what's with the horseshoes, Anton? Well, aside from the fact that my colleague Luke is gonna just throttle me over the head if I don't get the horseshoes working. One of the things about this game, I don't know if you've ever played it in real life, but it's really hard, actually. It requires a really, really nuanced, controlled throwing behavior, which I don't have. You'll see in a moment how terrible I am at this. And so it is, in my mind, the perfect benchmark to really get throwing right. I totally don't think I have it now. Right now I'm just using the sort of velocity and angular velocity of the controller at the moment you release something, which is a really noisy and unreliable way to get a good object movement. And so let's, let's throw some. So I hit it against there. Well done, Anton. Come on. Ah. Oh. Horrible. Horrible. Ah. All right. Third tries a charm. So yeah, so this is something that I'll be using to to sort of tune my throwing behaviors and honestly just create other sorts of lawn games that you can play hot seat multiplayer and if we're feeling adventurous, maybe eventually networked. No promises on, on that part, though. I have no idea if, if the other things I've been doing with these objects are in any way networking friendly. So if you come down here into the sandbox, there's a three, a five, and an eight meter course. Let's see. I'm just gonna really embarrass myself here. All right, all right. Don't look stupid in front of the internet. You can do it. Ah, oh, reprehensible. Anywho, so yeah, so that's over here, and this 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 sort of sandbox space will be lit better and slowly expanded or broken out into its own scene eventually. So let's jump off the Vive microphone for a little bit. I want to apologize, by the way, in the past couple videos, the sound has been... In fact, in all the videos, something's been wrong with the sound. I still don't have a proper recording set up. The, uh... The Vive microphone is so sensitive. For those of you who are talking about how loud my breathing is, the microphone is millimeters away from my nose. And even putting some tape in there didn't fix it. So my apologies. Um, over this month, I will, I will actually get a proper mic with a pop filter and all of that set up for doing future videos. But with that out of the way, um, I figured I would just talk a little more about what exactly is going to be available immediately at early access and what the what the sort of near-term plans are and what the long-term vision 
is. Um, in terms of what's going to be available at, at launch, it's going to be the main shooting range environment that you've seen a whole bunch of. And the first experiment I did involving um, the sort of action-y prototype that I showed in the video. And so you might be asking, what are those two things, other than that the weapons are in them, have to do with each other? Basically, H3 VR is going to have sort of two areas to it. I've been calling them in my sort of design notes, the apartment and the basement. The apartment is going to be the sort of realist, immersive environments akin to what the shooting range, the sort of main large warehouse shooting range that I'm working on are going to be. There's going to be a little bit of a sci-fi edge to them, but largely they're going to be very tangible, um, very much with a visual focus on immersion and detail, um, and with fairly, with realist physics, sort of realist content. It's where the lawn games, it's where our eventual high fidelity grilling simulation, which I should be able to talk about more of in a week or two, are going to be. And then there's going to be the basement. And what the basement is going to be is basically my experiments. This is, this is such a new medium that all of us who are doing VR dev are, frankly put, we're just clawing around in the dark with this stuff in, in so many ways. I likened it on Twitter earlier today to making an FPS game before someone had figured out WASD controls. There are no standards. We are wildly trying everything at this point to see what works well. You know, if you've played any number of Vive experiments so far, almost everyone is doing input differently, um, doing their object interactions differently. And so I think it's, it's valuable both to the effort and to myself as a developer and the community who's interested in these sorts of things to put out experiments warts and all, um, you know, without the sort of, without the polishing step that would eventually bring them to be more complete if they even panned out. And so what H3 VR is going to have a lot of is, and I'm probably going to be adding these on a weekly or every other week basis, various sorts of interaction and game experiments that are using the virtual objects, using the weapons in some fashion. Then based on feedback, based on what people think and anything useful I've learned, some of them will be further developed into sort of more cohesive mini games or even mini game sequences. Who knows? Um, but the point is to get stuff out in, in a rougher way to get really useful data from folks of, of how things are working, um, is it fun? Is it too challenging? Does some aspect of the interaction system fall apart in those contexts? And so, yeah, so there's going to be a whole bunch of that. In terms of the, if, if, now, if you're just here for the guns and you're just here for the realist environments, don't worry, that's not being abandoned. Um, my goals at the moment are to basically create, to start with, three environments that are about that. One of which will be a very short range, probably very much handgun oriented, quintessential indoor shooting range, paper targets, um, and various sorts of challenges. If you've ever played the old light gun game, Police Trainer, um, I'm going to be taking a lot of inspiration from that. Um, the sort of mid-range warehouse space is going to continue to be a sort of grab bag target space um, slash sort of any sort of experiment that's appropriate to do in a sort of 50 by 50 meter area um, will continue to grow in there. And then lastly, I'm going to be doing, I'm calling it the roof right now because it might actually be on the roof of the giant building that all of this is, you know, narratively taking place is going to be the long range um, area for say sniper rifles and such long range grenade launchers if i'm feeling frisky one week maybe a 14th century f french trebuchet whatever i feel moved to and and that really sort of that 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 gets at what what this game is about there's going to be some narrative cohesion but in a major way this is this is this is our wild experimentation uh project and so if if you're interested in that it's is is it going to be a is it going to be a linear narrative game no is it going to have more structure to it than most pure sandbox experiences most certainly it's going to be leaderboards it's going to be challenges so so in ends my ramble i hope i know this is a somewhat unusual way to go about pitching an early access experience um 
but it's 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 a new time for this medium and i think just being forthright about despite the you know the polish that you may see in certain aspects of virtual objects we are we are all still really learning with this stuff and it's exciting and i want it i want to get it out there into people's hands as quickly as possible and really communicate with you guys about what's working for you what's not you know how people's various sort of room setups affect things so if you're dying to play with what we've got working now hot dogs horseshoes and hand grenades will be available on steam on april 5th feel free to wish list us ahead of time we're going to continue doing these weekly devlogs and probably doing content updates basically as they're done or at any moments where i feel like something really warrants testing well as always thanks for watching and i'll see y'all next week